To solve an optimization problem with linear constraints, we introduce slack variables to turn all inequalities into equalities, find a basic feasible solution where all free variables are zero and all slack variables are non-negative, increase a free variable so that the objective function increases, identify a new set of free variables, and lather, rinse, repeat. The key to turning this into an algorithm an algorithm has decisions but no choices. In particular, we need a rule for selecting a free variable to increase, and a rule for which basic variable to become a free variable. It also helps if our algorithm is presented in a form that's easy to work with. It's convenient to represent our constraints with slack variables as a coefficient matrix. Since we're actually trying to find the values of x, y, and so on, we don't really care about the values of the slack variables, and so we'll write our coefficient matrix with the values of x, y, and so on first, and the slack variables at the end. But this matrix won't include our objective function. Could it? Since L equals 12x plus 5y, it looks like another linear equation. So what if we included it in our system as an equation? This produces our tableau, and it's important to remember we can only do this if L is a linear function. So let's produce the tableau for this problem. Adding slack variables to turn the inequalities into equalities. Rewriting our objective function in standard form. It's important to note that this is not an inequality, so we do not introduce a slack variable. This system corresponds to the augmented coefficient matrix, where we'll indicate the free variables in bold. So here's x and y as free variables. Now let's think about this. From the L row of our tableau, we can recover the objective function. We made x into a basic variable because it had the largest positive coefficient in the objective function, but this means it would have the most negative coefficient in the L row. This gives us a decision rule for which variable becomes basic. It's the variable in the L row with the most negative coefficient. Again, this is a decision, not a choice, we don't get to choose which variable it is. Next, how do we decide what our new free variable will be? Since increasing x will increase our objective function, we'll increase it as much as possible. Now, we still have y equals 0, so the first row gives us the equation, and solving for c1 gives us And since c1 is supposed to be greater than or equal to 0, this means... And while we could do the arithmetic, when you're creating an algorithm, it actually helps not to do the arithmetic. So keeping the slack variable non-negative requires x be less than or equal to 300 thirds. But there's two other slack variables. So our second row gives us... And so... Keeping c2 greater than or equal to 0 requires, which gives us another requirement for x. And finally, the third row gives us, since x has to satisfy all three of these, we'll use the lowest bound. Notice these bounds are found by dividing the entries of the column of constants with the entries of the column of the no longer free variable. The lowest of the bounds is 400 fifths, and this came from our third equation. If x equals 400 fifths, then c3 will be 0, which will be our new free variable. Notice that this is the currently basic variable in the row that gave us the least bound. 
and this gives us a decision rule for the new free variable. For each row, except the L row, divide the constant term by the coefficient of the no longer free variable, the currently basic variable in the row with the least quotient will be the new free variable. So now that we have a new set of free and basic variables, we can row reduce. Now ordinarily the pivot is the first non-zero enter in the working row. However, this assumes our free variables are in the rightmost columns. So really, the pivot is the first non-zero entry in the working row that doesn't correspond to a free variable. So if we want C3 and Y to be free variables, in the first row of our matrix, um, I mean in the first row of our tableau, the first non-zero coefficient in the first row is for X. And since X is a basic variable, then we'll use this entry as the pivot, and we'll use the first row to clear out the entries below the pivot. In the second row, the first non-zero coefficient is for Y, but Y is still a free variable, so we'll go to the next non-zero coefficient, which is for C1, So we'll use this as our second row pivot. And for convenience, we'll multiply our second row by negative 1, so our coefficient is positive. Let's simultaneously clear the entries above and below the second row pivot. In the third row, the first non-zero entry of a basic variable is for C2. And again, for convenience, we'll remove the common row factors and make the C2 entry of the third row positive, then pivot along the third row using the C2 column entry. And again, for convenience, let's remove common factors and make our pivots non-negative. Notice that our row reduction automatically rewrites L in terms of the free variables. Now, the greatest negative coefficient in the L row is that for Y, so this will become our new basic variable. Dividing the constants by the coefficient of Y give us the least of these bounds is 320 seconds, corresponding to the row with basic variable C1. So C1 will become our new free variable. So now we pivot. In the first row, the first non-zero coefficient of a basic variable is for X. So we'll use this as our first row pivot and clear out the entries below the pivot. In the second row, the first non-zero coefficient of a basic variable is for Y. So we'll use this as our second row pivot and clear out the entries above and below it. In the third row, the first non-zero coefficient of a basic variable is for C2, and we'll use this as a pivot after removing common row factors. Now we see that the L row corresponds to the equation, or and notice that if we increase either C1 or C3 from 0, the value of L will decrease. So this is the greatest possible value of L, and it'll occur when x equals 1720 seconds, y equals 320 seconds.